Hi, you're Ted. We're going to look at quadratic equations today. And we've seen those before. Back in year eight, we looked at Pythagoras' theorem. That was an example of a quadratic equation. And a quadratic equation is simply an equation where the highest power of the pronumeral is two. Okay, and we know that if you've got a power of two, then we say that the, the uh, equation has a squared term. So let's have a look at the first First question up here. We've got to solve m squared equals 16. So I want you to copy that heading down to that question and then I want you to write down the question again because we're going to draw on top of the question. Okay, now to undo a power of 2 we have to do the square root. Okay, and we know that with a quadratic that we have to take plus or minus the square root because we did these last year as well. So, you must have a plus and a minus here in front of the square root. Now the square root undoes the power of 2, so you get m, and you get plus or minus 4. Okay, so you get m equals plus or minus 4. Now, that means you've got two answers. Alright, so m equals positive 4, m equals negative 4. Those two answers are combined and abbreviated in this way. So you don't have to write these two down, just write that down because you've got two answers in the one line there. Uh, now you might be asking why do you have a plus and a minus? Well think about it. m squared equals 16. So 4 squared equals 16 and negative 4 squared equals 16. So there's two numbers which I can square to get 16. That's why you've got a positive and negative answer. One of those numbers is positive, and one of those numbers is negative. Okay? Let's look at question two. In fact, you write that down. You can pause the video and have a go at question two yourself. So I'm going to write down the question again. Okay. Now I've got to get the x by itself. So first thing here is I'm going to get rid of the times three here. So divide by three. Divide by 3, cancel. That gives you x squared equals 25. Now, now we've got this question looking like the previous one. So we're going to square root both sides. Square root, square root. Don't forget, you must put a plus or minus sign in front of the square root when you do this. Because there's two answers you're going to get. Okay. The square root undoes the power of 2, so that's just x now, equals, put down the plus or minus, and then square root of 25 is 5. Okay? Now, the plus or minus sign must be there, and it must be there, so it should be in two places in your answer. Okay? Now, copy that down. Look at question 3 now. Now, question 3, I'm going to write the question down again. There it is. 3m squared on 4 equals 12. Now I've got to get the m by itself. I'm going to get rid of the divide by 4 first. So times by 4 both sides. That cancels. So get rid of the fraction part first. And then we get 3... Now, 3m squared is equal to 48. Alright? Now... I have to get rid of that 3. That's a times 3, so do the opposite by dividing by 3. That cancels. And then you get m squared is equal to, that'll be 16. Alright. Now we've got m squared equals 16. We're back to what we had up here. So square root, square root, put the plus or minus sign there. And then m equals plus or minus 4, because the square root of 16 is 4. Okay? Now, question 4. So write that down, copy that down to your book. Uh, you can have a go at question 4 by yourself. This one is a little bit different because our answer will not be a whole number, it's going to be a decimal. So, let's, so I'm going to write the question down again. So 7x squared minus 88 equals 12. Alright, now, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the minus 88. 
because it's all by itself. So you always eliminate terms by themselves first. That gives you 7x squared is equal to 100. Now, we need to get rid of the 7 here. This is times 7, so I do the opposite by dividing by 7. The 7s cancel. Now, that will leave you with x squared equals 100 on 7. Okay, and the last step there is to square root. Now, you must put the square root over the whole fraction, and you put a plus or minus sign there. Now, that gives you x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 100 on 7. Now, that's the exact answer. So any time they ask you for the exact answer, you leave the square root on top, unless it simplifies to a whole number. Here I wouldn't leave the square root on top because it simplifies to a whole number. But if that doesn't simplify to a whole number, that square root then, and they want the exact answer, you would just leave it like that. But in this question they say, write to one decimal place. So you're going to get your calculator out. Right, you leave the plus or minus sign there. And you've got to find the square root of 100 over 7. So press your square root button. Press your fraction button. 100 over 7 equals. And to one decimal place it's 3.8. And you should put the approximation symbol there. X is approximately equal to plus or minus 3.8. Okay. Um, just one other thing. This is all also called third form. So if the question asks for third form, you leave it as a square root. If the question asks for the exact answer, you leave it like that. This, this is the approximate answer here, because we rounded it. So that is quadratic equations done of the form a squared equals c. Okay, so that is it.